minutes to okay let them come over we will start this session so basically whenever see uh, each and every students uh, first of all good morning to everyone and uh, even though i am explaining everything i would request each and every one to like go for the interaction means if i ask you any question then you should come up with the answers even though sometime you won't find yourself in a position to answer it correctly but it is essential for you to have the communication skill that is the key point of an engineer right so first of all if i ask you one of the question which is very much important for today's session that what is robotics and what do you understand by the term robotics then what will be your answer positively anyone do have any idea about robotics and ai part especially you often heard uh, maybe you often heard of this term artificial intelligence machine learning and so many things do you have any idea uh hello sir yeah yeah we say hi yeah so actually ai is a set of algorithms that actually helps the machine to perform any kind of activity uh, and takes decision yes. all by himself that's so, great and um, what about the artificial intelligence no so i said about artificial intelligence only but okay. for it, uh, yeah for the robotics part sir uh, it is a combination of three things uh, mechanical electronics and the cs part so yeah. if you uh, so so to do any kind of task if you want to uh, for a particular uh, task so sir mm -hmm. you can actually develop some kind of robots yeah instead of doing that particular task by a human all the time we can that's just... great that's great explanation actually so whenever we talk in terms of robotics let me explain this um, this term for you then we will move pro uh, further proceed with the ai part and we'll discuss that as well and in this today's session we will explore the possibilities of some of the coolest platform that is the open source platform and i will let you know what is a open source platform is and how to implement utilize the open source platform for the benefit and the application development uh, for robotics and ai part so in terms of robotics whenever the robotics terms uh, we hear from anywhere it means it is a combination of mechanism right it is a combination of mechanism usually make uh, usually made to help reduce our effort like the human effort the places some of the places is the like typical ones like if i ask you to like explore is it possible for you guys to explore the space without the protective suits or without the rocketry system then yes probably the answer will be no because we cannot able to go beyond certain limitation because of the because of the environment condition as well as the situations or or uh, like uh, the toughness of any task or like the toxicity toxicity of environment we, even though we cannot able to go nearby to the core of power plants and something like that so robotics is actually came into existence to help human beings to carry out their task to perform some of the task in our environment even though some of the greatest examples of robotics you will see nowadays uh, that nasa and our as well as our country beloved country india also sent some of the coolest satellite to the space right and uh, one of the rover system like several of the rover system already sent to some of the planets like mars jupiter and uh, other to explore the condition of those um, or the environment in the planetary system itself so one of the satellite already crossed our uh, solar system and it is uh, moving towards to explore further even though we lost the communication but yes we do have that pride to say that we sent something beyond our limitation so using the robotic system can can able to help ourselves in such a place where a human being cannot able to perform or cannot able to do the task so to utilize to utilize the proper resource in there we need some kind of mechanism and that particular mechanism is nothing more than the robotics part itself so as you know the robotics does require several of the things so let me share my new screen with you so robotics comes with one more part nowadays uh, the concept of a steam is most widely used so okay let me share my second screen then i will proceed
So I hope my screen, screen is visible to all of you, right? So if I talk in terms of simple explanations, so suppose if I have to explain you the robotics, like in computer system, you often find three of the key points. First one is the input device in computer. Second one is the processing unit. And third one is the output device, right? So in computer, what input does it to take the inputs from the hardware source and provide it to the brain of computer system. That is the processing unit, or we often call it as the central processing unit. And further, some of the output device is connected with our computer system to provide the outputs like monitor, monitor, printer, it is. So these are the device and the combination of three things we can able to define the computer system. And robotics is something similar to the computer system, even though we can able to correlate robotics to the human body itself. Like we do have different kind of uh, sensory organs with us, like the eyes, ears, nose, and so others, like the skin as well, which gives us the flexibility to understand more about the environment, right? So those things are for us is the input device in terms of human body. And in terms of robotics, we call those device as different sensors. So sensors are used to identify different object in front of the robotics structure, as well as to determine the condition of environment to like act and to like do the reaction or the action is stuff afterwards. So what happens next is the processing unit. In, in robotics, we call the processing unit as microcontroller. Maybe you already heard of this term before, microcontroller and the microprocessor. Maybe you already heard this term. So anyone do have any idea about what is the difference, key difference between microcontroller and microprocessor? Anyone from the student side? Do you have well, any idea? Yeah. Uh, actually, a microcontroller is a device where we can actually code that and give our own initial commands to perform any kind of task. But a yeah. microprocessor is already um, self-made, you can say, an algorithm that can only do that task that is already given to it. Yeah. Yes, we so can say that. So You can say that, uh, sir, you can say that Arduino is a microcontroller. But yeah. Whereas Intel processor or AMD processor, those are more microprocessors. You can say. Or even though the Raspberry Pi system does yes, have yes. a microprocessor in it, right? Yes, so yes, 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 you you done a great research on that. Yes, the Arduino one we can call it as microcontroller. So microcontroller is nothing but uh, but normal IC which does have the capability to store the programs in it. Like the small size of programs can be stored into the Arduino, and Arduino is one of the examples of microcontroller. Or in terms of robotics, we often call it brain of robotics or the microcontroller in robotics, which does the processing part and microcontroller is nothing but e prompts and e prompts means electronically erasable programmable memories means you can able to rewrite the programs again and again to help yourself um, uh, like perform the set of instructions that is the major point in here to discuss cpu in terms of computer that is the cpu in terms of robotics that is the microcontroller and apart from the microcontroller we do have the output device in robotics. So what do you understand by the output device in robotics? Do you have any idea? Like what is robot or what, what is output device in robotics? Anyone? So no problem. So output in robotics is all about output in robotics. Okay. Just let me grab a white side. Yeah. Perfect. So output in robotics is all about providing some kind of locomotion, providing some kind of locomotion or the actuation system. Maybe you already heard this technical term before, actuation and locomotion. It is all about producing some kind of motion in the robotics structure. So we do have some kind of motion producing devices as well as we do have light producing devices. Uh, Ans Kumar, Please do not uh, draw anything in this screen as, okay. So like the LED can able to produce some of the <laughs> light waves. And also we do have buzzer or a speaker kind of stuff, a speaker kind of stuff to produce the sound waves. <laughs> to produce the sound wave, okay. So this is all about 
the three things in robotics. First one is the input system. Second one is the processing unit. And third one is the output device in robotics. So it is a combination of on three basic things in robotics. And what about the artificial intelligence? As I asked one of the question earlier, what do you understand by the term artificial intelligence? So anything that is upgraded form of robotics, because apart from these three hardwares, we, what we require in robotics is to have the programming in it, right? Whether the program, there are different, plentiful of programming environment are there to support the robotics structure. That is the primary one is the embedded C programming embedded C or C++. And apart from this, what we do use is the Python program to like accommodate into our robotic system to further execute and perform the task as per our requirements. So embedded C programming or the term embedded itself has a, uh, has a great meaning into it. Do you have any idea like what is embedded system or like have you ever heard this term before? Embedded system or embedded C programming? Anyone do have any idea? Anyone from the student side? See, the more you will come forward with the answer and interact with me uh, through this session, then it will be helpful for you to cope up with the understanding of robotics because I am for now, I'm only discussing about the theoretical portion or the basic part, but yes, through the proper understanding of these core knowledge will eventually help you in future to come up with the greatest idea. I will show you some of the cool example in uh, further, uh, for, uh, further class time, but yeah. So embedded system or embedded, the term embedded itself means we are talking about some of the hardware, right? Some of the hardware. So whenever we are going, um, we are doing any of the programming for our hardware device, that means we are talking about the embedded programming. And C, why C and C++? Because C is the most wonderful um, programming language I ever seen. Or like if you ask any programmer, like which particular programming language is uh, best one in this market or in this um, era, then they will probably come up with the answer C. And uh, the reason why, because C is the mother language of all programming languages. So even though the computer right now we are using, the operating system is developed in some of the portion, is developed in C. And also, it is widely supported by the communities and there are plenty full of supports for this programming language. You will find good book related to it. And why to discuss, maybe you are from the background of electronic and communication engineering or electronic E or CSE, computer science engineering and mechanical engineering or civil engineering, right? The reason why I'm asked, I'm saying this to you, some of the students will come with the answer like, sir, I'm from the civil background, I'm from the mechanical background, then there is no need to learn these kind of programming language that there will be no uh, uh, like scope for us to have understanding of this programming language. But let me tell you one thing before I proceed into, uh, into further classes. The term engineer itself means a person who do have knowledge in each and every domain, not related to one domain only. Even though, even though you are from the computer science background, you must have to go through the workshops, mechanical engineering workshops. You have to complete the engineering drawing. You have to complete the lathe. You have to complete each and every task in the workshop from the mechanical, as well as you will learn some of the portion of physics, which deals with the force and calculation and come up with the idea of programming language and other things in your later journey, right? Not in the, not from the first year of your, um, first year of your college. So the reason why I'm saying this, because we are the engineers and engineers are supposed to have exact knowledge in each and every domain. Suppose you are the you are from the mechanical engineering background and you are developing a coolest pro project world ever seen. So you require to have three things embedded into it. First thing is the knowledge of mechanism, the motion, the force. You must have that if you are from the core background and also to integrate to support further the mechanism or something like that, you need the electronic parts like the motor and other actuation system. And yes, if you are going for the automation journey, means you are developing project related to the automation, then yes, you need to have a proper understanding of programming language. That is the C programming is the most widely, widely used uh, programming language for each and every robotics programming or embedded programming. So to 
not feel like that uh, you only you should only have this particular knowledge and your college journey will be great in your uh, as per your career requirement but learning other thing as well will help you further in your endeavor in project development and so many things so let's move back to the embedded programming and python so programming is also involved in this robotics so robotics is structure does require programming to execute right and program is nothing but a set of instruction to a robotics body or something like that. so what we can say if we are talking about the programming itself not the embedded programming it means if you are talking about the programming part not the embedded programming means what we are trying to develop is the ui part user interface part in which you will see the input and the output right you will see the input and output and what is most beautiful in uh, in the robotics programming we can able to integrate the hardware into our programming part and see those execution of output in real time okay let me uh, add two more participant who are in the waiting list so i'm admitting those okay great so means we are talking about the user interface to control the hardware in the robotics part so even though you are if you are going to learn the c programming and so many things you will learn how to like we start with the start your journey with the general addition subtraction and and other things right but in the robotics journey you will see the actual hardware integration and the implementation of motions using the automation feature uh, by the programming part so programming is mostly required in our robotics structure right so in the normal term of programming we will only have the ui part in robotics we will have ui plus hardware motion so hardware motion is there so why i am explaining you this because i wanted to explain you the term ai part in detail so whenever we call some something is ai or artificial intelligence means it does have the neural network inside neural network inside means this particular program can able to decide ai is also piece of program which can also be used to identify the current situation and the most important thing is to take decision decisions what to do and what not to do not to do without need of human human of uh, like interference without the human communication or without the human interference means artificial intelligence can able to take decision on its own it does not require any of the suggestion or something like that if we talk in terms of do you have any idea about the ai part have you seen any examples in your day to day life where ai has been implemented anyone do have any idea about ai have you seen any of the ai in real life chat gpt in the youtube or something chat like that? gpt nahi hai chat gpt okay so maybe uh, maybe somehow i am a little bit wrong but chat gpt is not the ai and you see those videos editing software are also not the ai that is the marketing gimmick to tell you that this particular thing is the ai but that's a series of code like you know how google works right it does have the web web indexing feature it it, it indexes google voice or alexa alexa no alexa is not not the ai part you have you ever heard about the sophia yes sir so sophia is actually a humanoid robot which works on ai so that is the ai but chat gpt chat gpt and other are not the ai that's the simple upgrade what we can say chat gpt is upgraded version of google search or means a smart version of google search we can say that chat gpt also works in neural network but chat gpt cannot able to take any decision on its own if you ask some of the questions to chat gpt like uh, the comparison compassion love or something like that then it will tell you that uh, it is programmed for this particular purpose and then if you like uh, correlate something like religious thing and something like that it won't answer you those things 
So Google Assistant also works on a server to like fetch the detail from the internet and give you the outcome of those things. I also developed one of the humanoid robots, so-called the AI robot, uh, using the chat GPT kind of integration into it. So that's not the AI part. So artificial intelligence can able to take the decision means if chat GPT will say say uh, this particular line to you means it will be the AI. If ChatGPT will say that, sorry, I'm tired today, I will not give you the answer because I'm tired or something like that, means understand the ChatGPT is the AI. Otherwise, if ChatGPT is continuously answering your questions by indexing page, by going through each and every website and pulling out the details from and learning how to like answer it correctly, that's the upgraded form of Google search. Google do have one of the coolest feature to like index page and do the spider wave kind of stuff. Maybe you already heard this term before, or if you um, Google it itself, like how Google works. Okay, like you will um, learn how to, how the Google uses the indexing feature to provide you the details related. So Google is limited to find out the answers related in any website and chat GPT can able to give you uh, directly directly can able to give you the answers for your question. So chat GPT is upgraded form of Google search, not more than that, not the AI part. So artificial intelligence is something, a combination of uh, like programming stuff, a neural network probably, which can able to answer your question and do the task without the human interference, without taking permission from me, what to say, what not to say. Yes, Prem, please. Yes, Prem, you raised your hand. Do you have any questions? Okay, there is no question. Okay, fine. I have seen a video in China. A machine uses face recognition and robot copies the emotion on the face of the robot. Yeah, that is the, uh, in Python programming, in the future scope of this class, in Python programming, you will learn how to integrate the real-time videos uh, to process the data. Like even though that ITMS project, remember the ITMS project we do have with us, the intelligent traffic management system through which we can able to detect the presence of seat belt and the helmet around us. Helmet, uh, whether a driver is wearing a helmet or seat belt, uh, respectively, to while driving a bike or the car. So, have you seen those things? And uh, if you are not um, wear anything like the helmet or the seat belt, it will give you the challan directly to your mobile number and the registration or details in your email as well. So those things is actually part of OpenCV algorithm, which can able to detect real time presence of seat belt and the helmet is stuck. So those are the algorithm, but not the AI part, not the AI. It uses our machine learning algorithm to identify those, identify the uh, person who are uh, like defaulting the rules or like uh, like crossing the traffic without the permission with red light or something like that. So we can able to develop. Let me show you one thing. Then only it will be clear for you to understand what I'm trying to say. So let me start my PyCharm in which I do have the Python programming for one of the video recognition or we can say that image processing or video processing using Python. Okay. So I believe my screen is again visible to you, right? So this program uh, is only 32 offline. And let me execute this program to show you the feed uh, output of this particular program. This is a small program can able to track down each and everything present in front of the camera. And through that, even though we can able to capture our emotions, uh, we can able to like go for other stuffs like tracking of hand, uh, developing some of the drone system using the gesture control, even though these programming can be done in Raspberry Pi system to further help you to the uh, automatic drone or uh, self-tracking drones. So right now the program is executed. Okay, fine. Okay.
okay fine maybe some problems are there let me restart those Okay, the reason why it, it wasn't started, let me switch off my video in here. So then only this particular algorithm can able to utilize my camera. Okay, so I'm executing the program. So because I do have only one camera with me in my uh, laptop, no other webcams are there. So it won't come up with the same thing. So I believe my screen is perfectly visible to all of you. So. I am setting my complete screen to show you the output of this program. So now you can see um, this particular program is actually tracking me, right? If I'm moving here and there, it is tracking me. On the background, you can see it is detecting perfectly one person within um, in the time frame of 114.1 millisecond, right? So if I pull back this particular window and if I show my program, one of the mobile phone, then the point 0 0.85 and 0 0.72 or 94 that's the probability of the guess of this particular program means the program is 94 percent sure that one person is there and you can see i hope my uh, screen is visible to all of you and if you focus on this particular line you will see that it is detected one person and one cell phone in front of the camera system right so using this simple algorithm we can able to like come up with the idea like how to develop the robotics and AI structure. So this this one was the basic example which I can give to understand the image processing or the video live video processing in the uh, Python programming. But we will learn several things apart from these as well in our first introductory class and then proceed with the Python programming in our future. So, okay, let me admit those as well. So I'm turning on my video in here. Yeah. So as you know, the robot word, the word robot came from the check word, right? And also it does have very unique background in it. If I could recall some of the unique background, how the robot is thing came into existence, it came because of one of the uh, play, the Rosham Universal Robot by Carol Capital. And Carol Capek only performed one of the one of the event or the play we can say in 1920 to explain that this one will be our future. That in future some of the machines are going to help us carry out different tasks in our home, in our office, and other places. And they will obviously replace the human need in automation and other industry. In different places where your mobile is getting assembled, the laptop is getting assembled, or the bike or the vehicles are getting assembled are from the automation factory itself. In medical industry as well, you will see the uh, absolute necessity of robotics stuff in the current situation to perform some of the surgeries and come up with the ideas to help patient in all. So, Whenever we talk in terms of robotics, it does have the ethical consideration as well. Ethical consideration means, suppose if you are developing any any of the uh, things like the, um, we can say the machinery part or anything, it never be meant to harm any person, right? So you should come up with the same idea to follow the ethics, even though you are um, attending your classes in our college and you are following the guidelines of wearing proper dress and come up with proper attire or something like that, means you have to come up with the same idea, same ethics need to be followed for the development of robotics. So there is three basic laws need to be followed in robotics. But let me tell you one thing as per my personal experience that you should come up with your idea as well to like integrate into these uh, law of robotics to help you build a smart system rather than the sophisticated system. So Asimov's actually gave three law of robotics. And the first law is a robot may not injure a human being through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. This law actually emphasizes the importance of preserving human safety and well-being. So you must integrate those things in order to protect the 
human being in total otherwise what will happen the robot will become the terminator and maybe you already seen the movie terminator and what happened next you know well right so you must come up with the this law to protect the humanity itself second law it states that the robot must obey the order given to it by a human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law the second law highlights the need for robot to follow the human instruction recognizing human authority however it is acknowledges that if following those orders would violate the first law potentially harm human beings the robot should not come kedar said sir can it be true in future yes it will be true in future because we should uh, we each and every person who are involved in the robotics and automation journey even though the facebook developed one of the ai right and you maybe you already heard that particular story that that particular ai started developing their own language to communicate with the other ai part so yes and they stopped that thing they shut it down the facebook already shut it down and they did not allow their ai counterpart to like go for the uh, go for the connection through the internet to further explore and come up with the things so google map is not bca sneha gupta no google map is not the ai it's a simple algorithm to locate you in a point in space that is the simple algorithm to locate you into point in space google not Google Map is not the AI. That's the API which we can able to use in other mobile application and so other thing, so many other things. So third law actually states that robot must protect its its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first and second law. Let me tell you the situation and the scenario where where this particular third law will be applicable. Suppose you sent one of the robot to explore the volcano inside the vol. It went inside the volcano and suddenly. the some some of the wheels or some of the parts were not working then on that case robot can able to protect its own existence means it can able to fix itself otherwise what will happen we will lose the robot and we cannot able to like further communicate and do the research work over there even though we are sending some of the robots to different planets to explore and to come up with the uh, research work right so some if it is possible that that particular robot will not work after some point of time or even though after launching the rocket or just landing the rocket into the ground that won't work because some of the technical failure or something like that on that scenario robot can able to repair themselves or protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first and second law otherwise what will happen suppose robotics structure came in in front of you and trying to kill each and every person in in front of them then then we cannot able to let the robots to assemble or repair themselves on that scenario so we must consider these three laws before proceeding into the robotics or to develop the robotics in total so even though uh, robotics does have several things in it so i will explain you those in details and further move into the basic electronic components because learning the basic electronic components will help you build your own structure rather than dependent being dependent on the arduino and something like that like the term i asked about um, about the microcontroller and i got the answer the microcontroller the time when i asked the question related to the microcontroller and uh, i got the answer that arduino is the microcontroller right how many of you are agree with me that uh, arduino is microcontroller and anyone do have any opposition in this then please let me know in the chat section how many of you are us uh, uh, agree with me that arduino is microcontroller and how many of you are not agree with me that arduino is not the microcontroller let's argue in this so that our doubts and uh, future learning scope will be clear and we will learn the core concept that is why i'm asking this question how many you how many of you think that arduino is microcontroller and how many of you do not have any idea like arduino is not the microcontroller something like that? okay sangeeta ghosal think that arduino is microcontroller so i am taking a vote so arduino got one point sangeeta and devanshu also said that it is microcontroller okay fine anyone else i agree i agree okay arduino is microcontroller arduino is microcontroller i will i will uh, try my best to uh, like 
debunk this myth today okay okay one microcontroller so everyone is agreed on this term that arduino is microcontroller okay yet each and every yes 8 bit microcontroller and 16 bit there are two variant of that vivek there are obviously some of the variants are there 8 bit and 16 bit of microcontroller same yes it is a microcontroller okay great so let me tell you that this particular sentence yes varun you raised your hand uh, for the, you saying that this is microcontroller right so now this thing is going interesting right and sneha kumari said i disagree okay one person is on my side who is disagree in this term so one i am this side me and plus sneha on my side are are more microcontroller than arduino raspberry pi is also there no raspberry pi 4 is also not the microcontroller Arduino can also be considered yes, Saket. Saket, I would like to meet you in person whenever I will come to the college and visit the college. I will meet you in person. Arduino can also be considered, not all also be, but Arduino is the development board, not the microcontroller. Let me tell you how. Okay. Let me tell you how. Let me clear your doubt on that. So let me open up one of the Arduino. What? one of the Arduino diagram, maybe you already seen this particular Arduino before. So here we do have is the proper version of Arduino, right? The most popular one that is the Uno version, right? Maybe you already heard um, and seen this particular microcontroller at some point of time. So Uno or Arduino itself is not the microcontroller. Arduino is known as the development board in which microcontroller is present, in which microcontroller is present. And you know which part is known as microcontroller in here? This part, this IC in here, this IC is known as the Atmega. It is manufactured by the company Atmel and it is the most common of the processor is Atmega 328P or u or u or p something like that the suffix will be changed as as per the uh, model you will buy from the market so this particular chipset or we can say that this particular ic integrated circuit in here is the microcontroller is the microcontroller not the arduino so do not get yourself fooled in such situation arduino is not the microcontroller but arduino is the development board in which we do have the microcontroller. So we do, let me explain this Arduino first to you, then we will come back to this point. Okay, Rana Datta, um, you lost your data around 80% because I, I had update my, updated my phone. See, you joined the engineering life, right? And engineering life does require you to have a proper internet connection. Then only you can able to come up with the research work and collaborate with other people. So try to get some of the cool fiber connection in your home and come back soon in our class. And also the class recording will be shared to each and everyone. And if you actively participate in this live session, then you can also come up with your questions and doubt throughout this session. Like we are interacting right now, right? So, yes. So, we do have one of the port in here. That is the A type port. And particularly, we do have A to B type data cable to further communicate with the computer system. B type is nothing but USB 2.0. Okay. So, you USB 2.0. So, we do have one power jack in here. Power jack is uh, required whenever after the completion of our programming, we need to have the power jack to supply the power directly to our controller board and even though if you do not have any power jack with you then we do have this dedicated session uh, section for the power thing i will explain you in a minute so let me tell you about uh, one good thing about power jack in arduino you know we can able to give the uh, power to the power jack around 7 volt to 12 volt that is the recommended voltage from the manufacturer. So you should not uh, like provide more than this particular voltage. Otherwise, you will burn off your uh, Arduino. So make sure you are using a proper power supply, 7 volt to 12 volt, and 1 ampere will be enough for the Arduino. And apart from this, you can able to attach many sensors, many output device possible. So not many, but 0 to 13 pin in here does have 
the name means IO pins and IO stands for input and output pins. So these pins can be used to integrate the input device like the sensors and the output device for the same. But remember, do not contradict with the pins. If you are using one of the pin to integrate the sensor in it, then do not try to use the same pin for the output device. So one pin, one device at a time. Remember that. So apart from this, let me tell you one more thing, like how we can able to, okay, now the doubt is clear. Anyone do have any disagreement with me that Arduino is not the microcontroller or the microcontroller? So Arduino does have a great brain. The major platform launched it as the open source platform. Then further what happened? And you know, uh, anyone do have any idea like what is open source platform? Anyone? So help me with your answer. Anyone do have any idea about open source platform? Have you ever heard about open source platform? Where we can build and yes, share sir, our... like uh, Linux and uh, Firefox. Wow, that's great. Yes, that's the example. And if I ask like, what is open source platform? Then what will be your answer, Sneha? It's not having any foundation. Somya said it's not having any foundation. Source code is open to all. A platform which is open to all. Yes, yes, perfect. Saket and Devdeep. Devdeep, you came up with the proper sentence which I was speaking earlier. So whenever we will hear or see this term open source means it is free for all. For the educators, mentors and all. We can able to utilize its source code we can able to utilize its source code and also we can able to modify the source code for our own project or own benefit. That is the open source platform. So what Arduino done is a great market manipulation. They said that their product is open source and then everyone can able to utilize the same, right? And further, the Arduino cloud and something like that, that came into existence. Now you have to pay for that thing if you are using their cloud and so other things. So you can also, the reason why I'm explaining this, the Arduino is not the microcontroller because you just have to buy this particular IC, the E from Atmega 328P, and you can come up with your microcontroller, your own version. Suppose Raushan is going to make uh, one of the microcontrollers. So you can make Raushan microcontroller for the same. So you can name it Raushan microcontroller and it will be your, your microcontroller for the same. So you can come up with your idea and as an engineering point of view, you should not be dependent on these development board rather than you can come up with your ideas to build something. Okay, so in your robotics session, in your practical session, Ajijul sir and everyone else, like the faculty member who is supporting this event, is going to teach you how to build your own microcontroller and come up with the idea to support the same. Okay. Okay. Puja. Okay, fine. Let me... Okay, fine. So let me move back again to the platform we started earlier. So I hope my screen is visible, right? So we do have plenty full of uh, open source platform through which we can able to come up with the design and so other things. And apart, along with the robotics journey, you should need to have the understanding of rapid prototyping. That is the 3D printing, which will be discussed in separate class. Why 3D printing? Because learning the integration of electronics part, which in robotics will help you to build a project, but to finalize it for the future scope or the project development, you need to have proper product designing idea. So some of the platform I will share with you to start your journey in robotics programming and so many things. And also I will share one of the video uh, with you to help you understand the concept of uh, integration of artificial intelligence into the robotic system. Before that, we will complete our basic electronics segment today and, and understand the scope of these things. The, the reason 
already I explained earlier that we need to use the Atmega 328 P or PU, something like that microcontroller to build our own development boards to, uh, for our own project. Suppose the reason why I'm going to explain you the basic components in robotics like the electronics part, because suppose you often find, suppose what, uh, we often find standard adapters or standard uh, things in the market. Like if I ask you to buy some of the adapters for your microcontroller, then what will happen? The microcontroller you will buy and it will run on a standard a standard voltage, suppose 12 volt in total. You will find that 12 volt adapter as an standard in the market. But what, what will happen if your robotics structure you are developing for your future scope, your robotics structure does only require 7 volt or 5 volt in total, then how you are going to accommodate the same 5 volt or 7 volt into the circuitry from the 12 volt, that is why the understanding of basic components like the register, capacitor, light emitting diode, transistor, inductor, IC, circuit breaker, fuse, and other device are essential for you in this particular robotics and automation or further we can say the artificial intelligence journey. And we will learn from this scratch. So let me tell you one of the key point in this, uh, in this components before some people are in the waiting room. Let me admit those as well. Okay, fine. So registers. So maybe you already heard about the register before in your class too well, before coming to this um, engineering journey. So register is nothing but a device, a component, which is used to resist the flow of electricity, resist the flow of, flow of electricity into the circuitry. So register, we can able to, okay. I'm admitting two more students, okay. Resisting the flow of electricity into the electrical circuit. So why need to have this particular thing? Suppose we do have 12 volt and we want to have less drop, less drop of voltage, suppose 11.7 volt or something like that, 11 volt. Then on that case, we can able to use the resistor to reduce the voltage. But remember, we should not go with the uh, like major conversion of, of potential using the register like 220 volt to 12 volt okay we can able to do that using the register but you should not follow the same for in our electronic circuit so register is used to resist the flow of electron in any electrical circuit or electronic device so capacitor like the uh, fly will do have we do have in our uh, generator or so other th in uh, other thing as well the capacitor is used to store the electricity and further it can help the circuitry to, to not have the fluctuation. It can able to, it can able to, the capacitor are used in the circuitry to reduce the fluctuation of current. So it can able to store the energy in circuitry and it will supply the energy when it is required. So it will balance each and everything. Otherwise the, the major damage caused caused in any electrical circuit is because of the fluctuation. Fluctuation kills uh, more than more than lack of devices per month, I believe. So make sure you will utilize your capacitors in different places, even though for conversion of 12 volt to 5 volt or 7 volt around, we should use the uh, register, uh, the diodes and capacitor combinations. I will explain you that in the circuitry section. So let me proceed further in this chapter apart from this what we do have is the led and as the name implies led means light emitting diode so light emitting diode actually works uh, whenever electricity is uh, supplied to the ter two terminal of the leds the the diode inside it starts emitting the light that is why it is named after as light emitting diodes and transistor we can utilize transistor in our elect electronic circuit for basically three purposes Three purposes. First is to amplify the voltage. Second is to, uh, first is to amplify the voltage. Second is to step down the voltage or current, step down the voltage. And third is to, uh, the transistor can be act as a switch in any electronic device. So it does have three specific legs, namely emitter, base, and collector. 
it can be in different places there is no uh, limitation on which side the emitter will be so it is of different type as well and pn type or pnp type you can be able to go through the google search and uh, learn the same so it will help you further to um, build a good concept in robotics and automation so transistor apart from the transistor we do have inductor inductor acts as a small transformer or we can say to smooth these signals in any electrical circuit and integrated circuit as you all know is it, it is the combination of lakhs of capacitor transistors and uh, other register kind of stuff into it embedded into it that is why it is known as integrated circuit and further it does have different types of we do have different types of integrated circuit with us like ic can be of e proms type like the microcontroller which i already showed you uh, of the time when I showed you the Arduino board, that is the Atmega 328. We do have different type of microcontroller as well. So that particular microcontroller is is one of the type of IC named as EE prompts. EE prompts means electronically erasable programmable memories. Okay, so EE prompts. The microcontroller is EE prompts. So now you do have understanding in IC. Let's move further. Let me clear my drawing and go back down there. So yes, obviously, whenever you are building any circuitry, Abhirajit Misra said, sir, will I be get whole lecture recording? My phone has no charge at all. Okay, no worries. I will try to um, help you on that. Don't worry. Okay, fine. So before proceeding, okay, fine. Circuit breaker and fuse. Obviously, whenever you are trying to build any of the circuitry for your robotics and automation part, you need to provide a specific way to disconnect each and everything the time when it will short circuit or something desirable like uh, disastrous will happen into the circuitry. So circuit breaker is one of the good kind of uh, device which can able to like uh, reduce that particular thing, the short circuit is stuff. And also we can able to integrate a small fuse in our circuitry to further save the other electronic components. So switches, you already know, switches are very much essential to provide the feedback to different system to turn on and off different system. And uh, we do have different kind of switches with us. That is SPST, SPDT, DPST, DPDT, which will be explained in our further classes, in our future classes, theoretically, as well as practically the people's uh, the management team of uh, robotics club in our engineering college will help you go through the practical implementation of dpdt switches and so other stuff before proceeding uh, into this um, this electronic journey let me help you understand one more concept than this one okay let me open my jam board or else i can utilize the whiteboard in the zoom meeting itself Okay, fine. Now I do have the whiteboard. So in robotics or in programming, we often follow two of the things. First one is the analog system. Maybe you already heard of the analog system before. And second one is the digital system. So what is analog and what is digital system? You must understand this concept because these concepts will help you further in the programming part. And if you do have any doubts or like, um, uh, like if you do not have any knowledge or you do have any doubts in these two things, then it will be difficult for you to cope up with the programming stuff for your robotics structure. So help me with your answer so that I can come forward and explain it to you. So what do you understand by this term? The digital system and analog system. I'm expecting the answer from the student side. So anyone can able to answer in the chat box or even though you can able to help me uh, by unmuting yourself. So anyone um, do have any idea? Digital system and analog system or digital stuff or analog stuff. Because this thing will going to will going to help you in your further robotics understand. Yeah, Saket. I got first answer from Saket, CSC student. Digital system basically is a binary output system. Yes, that's a perfect answer. And anyone else like analog system about analog system or something? Can you able to add more on the digital system to explain it using the theory, uh, numerical values or something like? That? Digital system are more accurate. Uh, no, 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 Vivek, uh, actually digital system are 
far less accurate compared to the analog systems. So digital, Prakriti said digital uses zero and one. Yes, that I wanted to see in the chat box. Okay, let's move back to the, uh, to the class and see what is digital system and analog system. So Avisek said voltage current are analog system. Analog system is continuous and varying system. Yes, Sangeeta, you uh, said it correctly. And Sneha said, um, analog system has both digital and analog parts like it forms a continuous set. Yes. Great. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much for the answers. So whenever we talk in terms of the digital system means we are talking about two of the things. First one is zero and one. Means digital system follows these two values, only two values. Okay. Obviously that's the binary. It's, a, it's from the common sense, it's the binary and it will follow, follow only two values, zero and one. Means zero represents the off condition, okay? And one represents the on condition. To understand the digital system in a sim by simple example, you can take one of the good examples present in your home. That is the switches to control the electronic appliances in your home, right? We do have switches and what is the role of switches in, in, an, in, the, in your home? To turn on and off the device, right? To turn on and off the device. So it will produce two of the output, but not at the same time. But not at the same time, it will produce two of the outputs. One will be the on condition and on represents the value of one and off represents the value of zero. So according to the, uh, if we talk in terms of the voltage, what we are trying to achieve one will give you the 20, 220 volts to run the appliances, right? And zero will produce the zero volt in total. So in terms of electronic appliances, we can say that the voltage will change from these two values, zero volt to 220 volt, right? But on the other hand, what we do have analog system. Analog system is the range, is the range between zero to one. Means it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 including 0, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1.0. So including 0 and 1, we do have this system with us, that is the analog system. And you know what is the importance of analog system and digital system? So let me tell you the importance of uh, analog system and digital system by the scope of our programming, right? Using the digital system, we can able to turn on and off any of the device we want to. Like, suppose if you want to operate one motor, then you can able to turn on that motor and turn off that motor with respect to the robotics component, robotics output. But if we talk in terms of analog system, then we can able to take care of temperature reading, temperature reading or temperature generation, right? So temperature automatic hatchery or something like that does need to have the temperature generation in it, right? So using the analog system, we can able to generate the value that will be in range, not exactly the off and on condition. That is the beauty of analog system. And in analog system, we can able to get more precise value, which is required in our input and output system which is required in input and output system. So suppose if we want to have 0 0.8888 or something like that, then exactly 0 0.8888 can be generated using the analog system. So we can say that analog system is far more accurate than the digital system. And digital system is accurate as well because but only in terms of two values. It is accurate only in terms of two value. That is zero and one only, zero and one only, not 0 0.5, not 0 0.2. And also using the analog system, we can able to control the speed of motors. Yes, because suppose if you build any of the car, remote control car or like autonomous car, you need to control the speed because the time when it will turn from one edge, then what will happen? it will collide with the wall. So you do not want to happen, uh, do not want your robot to uh, like go through this particular thing. So you need to control the speed of motor. And yes, the speed of motor will be controlled by the 
analog system and by digital system we can only able to turn on and turn off the motor so i hope the analog and digital system is clear to all of you right anyone do have any doubts then please help me with the in the comment section so that i can able to resolve it as as needed so let me move back now the analog and digital system is completed let me share one of the cool um, what we can say one of the cool platform for you to do the experiment okay many students are still joining and some are leaving i don't know what is happening so one of the coolest platform is the tinkercad platform and you can utilize the tinkercad platform to like go for three of the basic that you can able to create 3d design circuitry code blocks and other things so let me show you one of the example which i have done in the tinkercad platform then it will be helpful for you to understand the importance of this platform okay let me grab one of the coolest sister Okay, hi. So, yeah, let me turn on my camera. Yes. So, I built one of the model, one of the model earlier, you can see using the design platform. If we click on the create, you will get three of the options. That is the 3D design, circuitry, code blocks, right? Using this design section, what we can do, we can able to design our Okay, we can able to design our own boxes for the project development, for the prototype development. If you do have any prototype or something like that, then you can able to design it using this platform. Suppose if I drag and drop these two boxes in here, and if I just, okay, just change the feature, I will help you understand and learn this platform. You don't have to worry. I'm just giving you examples to understand how to integrate each and everything in one place to, to make any of the robotics body. Okay. So, okay. Which is more accurate in analog system? We observe 12, nine. Okay. We got one of the component, which is more accurate analog one or the digital. What is the example? of analog system yes i will i will show you in a minute of example of analog system otherwise i let me show it to you so in terms of robotics let me show you the example of analog system okay otherwise it will be difficult for you to understand the thing so basic components of robotics and sensors okay Basics, basic components of robotics sensors. So let me go back in there. So already I explained you one of the key point in the robotics that it does have three of the things, right? Input device, processing unit, and the output device. So input device is all about the sensing unit. So let me give you the similarities of these things so that it will be easier for you to understand which one is accurate and which one is not accurate. In point of time, we can say that both of the system are accurate, but analog system is far more accurate than the digital ones. The reason why I'm saying that, suppose if you need to have, because the more precise result we can provide to others, then we can say that those things are more accurate, right? If you are reading a voltage using the digital concept, you will get the standard values without point, right? But using the analog system, we will get the values after the point as well. That means analog system is far more accurate than the digital ones because the digital one will round it off to some particular field like zero and ones. In term of zero and ones, it will round it off to zero one. Suppose if we have to represent 2.214.578, then we can also write this thing as we can write this thing as 2.214.6. Otherwise, we can also write this thing in digital terms 215, approximately 215, right? But analog will give us these values. 
analog will give us this value and digital will give us this value then tell me which one is now more accurate compared to each other the analog one or the digital one example of Sir, analog, analog yes the analog one is the more accurate compared to the digital one because digital one will be give you the round of value so i hope you will understand so apart from this, we do have several sensors, like we do have eyes in our body to give us the uh, understandability of what is present in front of us. Similarly, we do have CMOS image sensor, or we often call it as the camera unit in which CMOS sensor are there inside. So those things can um, is helping robotics structure to identify the object in front of it. To have the body balance, to do the body balance, what we do have is one of the things in here, do you, anyone do have the idea or the name of this particular organ in uh, just below our brain, which can give us the ability to uh, like balance our body? The spinal cord. No, not the spinal cord. Cerebellum. So search, search through the Google and find out the answer. What is responsible in our body to maintain the balance and you will get the answer, okay? Apart from this, what we do have is the gyro system, gyro and plus accelerometer system with us to provide the exact location of the bot as well as we can able to balance the bot using these sensors. Means we can able to get gather the data using the sensor and we will balance the bot uh, through the output devices. So gyro, maybe already you heard of this particular word before, the gyro is for. Anyone do have any idea about gyroscope? Yeah, let me see the chat section. Yeah, cerebellum. Susmita Prasad said it correctly. Cerebellum is responsible to like maintain the maintain the uh, balance in our body. That's great. Yeah, the gyroscope, what do you understand by the term gyroscope? Or have you ever seen or like uh, seen in example or in any place or in any device in which gyroscope or accelerometer are there? Do you have any idea? Any idea? In games, in mobile, Self-balancing object, yes. The perfect example is our mobile phone. We do have gyro and accelerometer in our mobile phone to exactly uh, like uh, give us the ability to play the games, uh, right? First to play the games, but actual reason to have the gyro and accelerometer is to provide you the location and something like that. The GPS navigation is also happens and the like, uh, uh, exactly the efficient uh, calibration of mobile can be done using this sensor and let me tell you one coolest example of gyroscope maybe you already heard of one person in your life uh, the name of that particular person is have you heard this name before not in his body not in his body do not uh, take me another way so have you ever heard the elon about elon musk and why he is so popular? Because of what thing he is popular? Yes. Not the billionaires. Money will not help you attain anything in your life. Money is a uh, materialistic stuff. Focus on knowledge. You will learn many more things. Yes. The rockets. Okay. I'm, I'm not talking about their Tesla car. I'm talking only about uh, the rocketry stuff today. And why the SpaceX is so much popular? Why is SpaceX is popular? Why they do have proper recognition in rocketry or a space exploration agency as an ex space exploration energy? Yes, Abhishek, you said it correct. You said it correctly, Abhishek. The reusable rocketry system, right? we can able to reutilize that rocketry because after launching this satellite into the orbit satellite into the orbit the rocketry system come back to the comes back to the ground and it lands automatically in the ground right so it happens because it does have two of the sensors responsible to responsible to provide the exact okay 
it does have the sensor to provide the exact coordinates of their location. Let me explain you how the gyro sensor works. Okay. So suppose we do have the gyro in which in which three axes can be monitored. Three axes, namely the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis, right? We do have three axes with us, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. So suppose I'm holding this particular object in space and it does have some of the lanes, some of the lanes from the ground floor, from the top floor, from the left, from the right, and from my back and from my front, right? So it will give the value of x, y, z coordinates in x, y, z coordinates using the combination of x, comma, y, comma, z in point of space, right? If you do have a good knowledge in mathematics or simple knowledge in mathematics, can able to help you understand the concept which I'm trying to explain. So it will give us the value. Suppose the object is not properly aligned in X axis and we want to align perfectly in X axis, then what we will do? The left side thruster will lift that object in this direction, right? So that it will come um, back to the normal position after stabilizing it onto the space location in any location. So gyro scope gives us the exact coordinates of, of the object in space, as well as why I mentioned the accelerometer, because accelerometer gives us the velocity of acceleration. Means if a body is traveling with certain velocity at a, in a point of time, then yes we can able to calculate actual acceleration. As you know, acceleration is nothing but change in velocity, right? Everyone agree with me? Acceleration is nothing but change in velocity or we can change that delta V upon in change in time, delta T, right? So change in velocity in unit time. That is the acceleration. So accelerometer gives us the value of acceleration in a space through which we can able to exactly come up to the point that how much speed it does have and how much acceleration it has. So we can able to control the rocketry system and through the control by showing the propulsion system and balancing the rocketry system, we can able to like uh, land back our rocketry system into the is on uh, Earth's surface, right? So that is why the gyroscope and accelerometer is important. Like we do have different things as well in our body, like the micro pumps and so other stuff. Micro pumps, similarly in our body, we do have arteries and veins to like uh, flow the uh, blood from one place to another. So we do have bio micro pumps and biochips in robotics body to help uh, move the fluid from one place to other. So we do have RF communication is stuff, not the RF communication in our body, but yes, our brain does generate some of the signals, right? Some of the brain signals or uh, signals it generates. So we do have different mode of communication. RF is one of the communication method in which we utilize the radio frequency. And apart from the radio frequency, what we do have is the Bluetooth. We do have infrared, we do have Wi-Fi, and now, the Li-Fi came into existence and we do have the radio wave and radio frequency and radio wave both are same. So these are the technology to further communicate with our robotics structure. So we will start learning how to integrate the basic, uh, how we can able to integrate basic in manual robotics by using combination of wires. But in future is scope, we will explore how to build radio frequency device. You do not have to buy the remote from the market. Do not spend money to buy costly items for your project work. Try to come up with the electronic waste and try to recycle those and come up with the electronic stuff to build something unique out of scraps. So Bluetooth, yes, Bluetooth module can help you to further communicate your uh, with the robotics device, IR sensor, infrared sensor, Wi-Fi device, Li-Fi. One of the major microcontroller we do have related to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is the ESP. So ESP uh, does have a great, uh, like we can, what we can say, that has great feature in it. In uh, like it is enabled, like Bluetooth enabled and Wi-Fi enabled, so that we can able to connect the microcontroller directly to the internet or with some of the devices like the mobile phone to control it directly without interfering and if you go for the arduino learn the basic using the arduino but do not invest buying the components 
uh, for the Arduino, like the modules for the Arduino. Motor sealed, motor sealed. Suppose if you are building any of the cars, do not buy it from the market. Buy the IC L293D from the market and build your own circuitry. Okay, so you will pay approximately 150 or 200 rupees for the motor seal. But if you invest your learning into the L293D, you will learn how to integrate each and every pins of it into the circuitry, even though it will cost you around 40 rupees in total to build the device by yourself. Yeah. So our team will help you further on those things as well. If you do have any doubt, you can able to connect back with the robotics uh, society in the, our college and they will help you further develop and um, resolve the issues and doubts in these segments if you want to build anything. So apart from this robotics structure, we do have our nose to provide us the senses, smell of sense. So sense of smell and similarly in robotics, what we do have different kind of sensors, COX sensor, CO, uh, NOX sensors and SOX sensor. Why I said COX sensor? Because there are two variants which need to be detected, CO2 and CO. Why I said the NOX? Because there are other variants, NO2, NO3 or NO and SOX. Why I said SOX? Because SO2, SO3 and other oxides as well are there. Okay, so these gas or pollutants, we can call it as pollutants or other gases can able to can a, can be detected using these kind of sensors. We do have plenty full of sensor and every sensor does have unique serial number on it through which you can able to identify this. What is the purpose of individual sensor? Okay, suppose if you're building any of the disaster control automation device to control the fire hazard by leakage of LPG or something. Okay, let me ask you one question. In terms of LPG, what is the full form of LPG? A simple question. Then the second question will go along with the first. Liquefied petroleum gas. Liquefied petroleum gas. And which gas is mixed in LPG to give it uh, smell or odor? Ethyl mercaptan. Wow, that's great. Prakriti. Ethyl mercaptan. Right? Ethyl mercaptan is responsible to provide the order and the fragrance or the smell, whatever we can say. So this is this uh, LPG cannot be detected using any gas sensor until or unless it is doped with the ethyl mercaptan. Because LPG does not have any order or any uh, smell or any color like that. So you adding this ethyl mercaptan can able to help us track the leakage of LPG. Suppose if we are going to use the uh, some of the sensor to detect the leakage of ethyl mercaptan, then we can able to reduce the fire hazard causing by these things. We can able to come up with the idea to implement auto calling feature, auto calling feature for fire to fire authority. Fire authority will be get notified if any possible chances are there in case of gas leakage or something like that. So apart from this sense, what we do have is the focus, like different uh, combination of uh, sensors, like the CMOS sensor and the motion of lens in front of it using the using the motors and the lens itself to produce the focus and autofocus, right? So that thing is available in our eyes. Our lens can able to adjust itself um, to like go for the autofocus. Stuff. So similarly, we do have autofocus thing in uh, robotics structure to have to let us have the sense of taste. We do have our tongue and taste buds in our mouth. So we do have different sensors to provide the sense of taste. One of the thing is mentioned in here that is humidity sensor. No, humidity sensor is responsible to uh, gather the information about moisture present in the atmosphere. Okay, so for the taste, we do have another kind of sensor which I will share you in the group itself. So for to generate a speech, we do have our vocal cord and the mouth to uh, like produce the speech and the sound waves. So in, in robotics structure, we do have micro speakers or these speakers to allow for the same. So pressure can be measured in our body uh, by the uh, pressure measuring instrument. Apart from our body, we can able to feel if we are facing any of the high pressure or low pressure, we can able to feel those as well in our body. But using different pressure sensor, we can able to gather data, the ambient pressure on that particular atmosphere because we all work in one ATM, right? One ATM. So suppose if we move back to another planet with a 10 ATM or 15 ATM, then we, we should take care of our electronic devices or gadget inside the box. Otherwise, what will happen? It will 
like uh, generate the vacuum inside and it will uh, uh, do the expulsion. I believe expulsion was the right uh, word to explain. Okay, let me uh, search and I uh, will let you. So touch sensor, our skin is one of the type of uh, sensing uh, thing which can able to provide us the, uh, the recognition of touch from the outer world as well as in robotics structure, we do have touch sensors. Probably the touch sensor is used to provide the input to microcontroller as well as we can able to control many motions using the touch sensors. So these are the common example of uh, uh, sensors present in the robotics structure, but not limited to this one. We do have plenty full of sensors. Let me show you some of the sensors which we do have color sensor, gas sensor. Color sensor is responsible to gather the data of color. Like it will inform the microcontroller which color is present in front of it. It is mostly used in the automation industry where boxes are need to separate, separate it in uh, the Amazon facility or something like that. It can be used to like separate different color things in front of it. So I'm just giving you example to understand the scope of these sensors. So alcohol sensor can be employed in place for the traffic police to monitor each and every person, whether they are uh, drinking while driving the vehicle or not. Yeah, is it Abhishek Bhatt Chatterjee said, is it possible to build our own sensor? Yes, absolutely. We can able to build any of the sensor of our choice to like uh, detect and like uh, to uh, get the reading from the environment. Okay. There is no limitation on that. Let me add you one thing on that. In the earlier time in 2013, when I, uh, 2013, 14, when I started to participate in robotics championship and competition, we, our team member does not have the, I does not had the, uh, idea to like, okay. So. In our system, uh, what I try to do is to build the IR sensor from the scratch using the transmitter and receiver pair and come up with the sensor to like control the things inside. So I already built several of the sensor and it is possible, 100% possible to build the sensor, but some of the place like the gyroscope and other does have miniature or SMD type of, of object in it. So uh, to do the soldering stuff, to do the surface mounting, SMDs are a little bit complicated. So I will re prefer you to utilize the inbuilt sensor first, then go for the uh, development of the sensor in future scope. So PIR sensor is one of the sensor named as PIR and full form of the PIR is passive infrared light. Traffic passive infrared sensor, rain sensor is used to detect the presence of rain. Heartbeat sensor is used to uh, gather the information of heartbeat beat per minutes and uh, IR receiver is one of the device which is often you seen in your television set or DVD or DTS set of box, something like that to provide the actual control, uh, to provide the controls from the remotes and all to control each and every appliances like the sound and other applications. So ultrasonic sensor is one of the sensor which brought, transmits the ultrasonic frequency into the environment and upon the reflection, it can able to detect it back and will let the robotics brain know that some obstacle are there present in front of it. So thermistor is one of the type of sensor to which we can able to gather the information about what is the temperature condition or what is the uh, condition of our room in terms of temperature. So ultrasonic sensor, thermistor, soil moisture sensor is responsible to gather the exact moisture presence from the soil and through this particular sensor, you can able to build on uh, automation device through which you can able to supply water to plant without needing to feed it manually each and every day. So these are the sensors and along with these, we do have plenty full of other sensors uh, to integrate in our robotics structure to come up with exact solution we are seeking, seeking for. Okay, so I hope the sensor part is clear. Let's move back. Let's move back to the 3D design. So I, I was showing you this particular platform. So you can utilize Tinker Plat Tinkercad platform to build the prototype. So first I developed one of the project, uh, the smaller project, not the big project, that is the smart electricity or wireless electricity. So I designed the outer casing and all and place the battery, place the button and everything in it. So now, now what I will do, if I, it does have one of the button in here, right? So it does have one of the button. This one is the transmitter and this one is the receiver. So you can see, uh, 
in my this hand we do have the transmitter let me remove my blur okay the blur is removed so this one is the transmitter and this one is the receiver if we place the receiver on top of the transfer transmitter and if we press the button then it is actually conducting the electricity wirelessly without without uh, any physical connection so one of the project i was i developed for the smaller student for the class students and through this project they can able to learn how to how to convert chemical energy into electrical and further electrical to magnetic and magnetic back to the electric the reason why i am showing this particular thing this is a complete product right so whenever you are designing any circuitry for your robotics application or robotics development then you also come up with the same casing and all to finalize those project up to the prototype level so that even though in some point of time you will get the entrepreneurship kind of stuff in your mind then you can able to launch your product directly without need of any other support from the manufacturers and industry so along with these uh, apart from these tinkercad platform what we do have is the mit app Pla app inventor platform which uses a simple way of developing mobile application but apart from this you can utilize the android studio and other platform as well to develop the mobile application to control your to control your uh, bots okay and uh, through this uh, mit app inventor 3d and you do have the arduino ide the arduino platform itself in which you will find several examples and documentation related to the programming. You will should go through the Arduino docs. You will find several examples. So we will cover those things as well in our upcoming classes. For now, as today, it was only the basic introduction of robotics and other devices. I believe each and everyone uh, understood the concept in proper term. In any case, if you do have any idea or uh, like any questions or something like that, you can ask me. I will answer those and after the question answer session, I will help you. Uh, okay, fine. I will help you further with one of the example which I wanted to show you earlier. Yes. Anyone, please help me with your question so that I can answer it according. If anyone have any queries, any question, they can free feel to ask sort of video. They will answer all the questions and they will clear all the doubts of yours. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, sorry, good sir. Morning. Good afternoon. No worries. Good afternoon. Sir, I wanted to ask you, like, as you said in the beginning of the session itself, that hello, irrespective hello. from. Hello. May I? Sumanta sir, uh, Sumanta sir, you are actually you are on un unmute. Who are you actually uh, from first year? Who are you? Okay. Sir, so Sneha Kumari Singh from the first yes, year. Yes, uh, I am from the department. This one, myself, this one. Then ask the question. That will be better for everyone. So that yeah, they, okay, they can sir. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, sir, I am Sneha Kumari Singh from first year of BTEC CAC department. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, like, as you said in the beginning of the session, that irrespective of the department from which we belong to, we can learn robotics and uh, like from the AI field. Yes. So I wanted to ask you, like, uh, how to begin with it? Like, what are the sources we should start with? Okay. Uh, actually, that's a good question, Sreya. Thank you for asking. Uh, actually, see, the reason why we do have this particular session today and we will have the systematic session on that, you can, uh, we will share the complete link and everything, the project details, and you already do have our contacts with you. So you can come up with, with um, in front of us to ask the question and come up with your doubts in case you need any help in project development. Apart from this, the documentation from the Arduino platform and other platform, even though in some point of time, you will move back to the PCB designing and development, then yes. Uh, the team member of uh, the robotics club itself is responsible to provide you those data as well as we do have our beloved Suman to sir the, through which you can able to gather the information and also each and every alumni is now connected with our department so you can come up with your portion in your group as i believe already one group is formed like whatsapp group is formed so you can come up with the questions and answer each and every resources will be provided to uh, junior students okay Yes, the PDF, Kriti asked, uh, can we get the PDF after this session? Yes, we will share one of the 
brief of this session using one uh, PDF or notes I can say, even though you will get the recording of this particular session. So Sneha, I believe your question is answered, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. And mom, uh, MD Arhans uh, asked one of the question that, sir, automation is a part of robotics or not, right? So whenever we talk in terms of automation, suppose I do have one garbage can with me. Suppose I do have one of the garbage can with me. What I've done is to give this garbage can the ability to perform the opening and closing of lid automatically without needing me to push the paddle. Then what, what I'm trying to achieve in here, we are giving our giving the freedom to any of the components or any of the thing present in front of us to decide what to do, what not to do, or perform the perform the task automatically without needing any human interference. That is the automation. In industry, different stuffs follows the follows the same procedure for the automation. Automation means we are integrating some of the hardware to automate the process. That's the main uh, main uh, thing I can say about the automation. So yes, automation is a part of robotics and through the robotics, we can achieve the automation in different stuff. I don't know how to do soldering. So there will be practical classes. Yes, Abhishek, yes. We, we, we always have each and every year, our uh, team organizes a grand workshop and different practical sessions for the same. You will have those um, soldering workshop or kind of stuff in your in your um, robotics lab robotics club itself sir this side gargi mahata from bba department sir how can i get to know more about robotics yes through the series which which i mentioned earlier our classroom program will go on for you guys for the junior student and we will give you the basic to advanced level guidance in the robotics field through the robotics club of our Arsenal Solar Engineering College. That is the major role of our club in our college. And that is the reason the founding members stabilize that particular club in our college, along with our faculty member involved. So I showed you one of the example and second example, I built this uh, particular device for me to help me uh, like go for this let me show you one video with you so that it will be easier how to integrate those stuff into the ai project in forward so okay let me open up this video i do have one of the channel which i'm not going to this particular thing i developed earlier okay let the youtube to go with the ad block stuff okay so i developed this particular robot earlier This is the basic example of integration of robotics in a complete system. So let me skip this to the... Hello, I am Shanku. Yes. So now I see. What is microcontroller? A microcontroller is a small computer on a single integrated circuit that is designed to perform specific tasks. It contains a processor, memory, and input-output peripherals, all on a single chip. Microcontrollers are commonly used in embedded systems and devices such as appliances, automobiles, and industrial machinery. Hello, what do you understand by term planet? A planet is a celestial body that orbits around a star is spherical in shape and has cleared its orbit of other objects. So this one is the basic um, application which I developed using the MIT app in Mentor platform. But further, you can able to integrate the Firebase or something like that cloud storage to control it from anywhere around the world. That is the major uh, things to do in the robotics. So integration of all of the things like the software part, the hardware part, and the programming or the uh, mechanism building part is much more important in any robotics development. And robots are obviously the essential and the used one because robots can all can able to help us do the task on that particular environment where a human being cannot able to reach or perform the task, right? So yes, to shut down all shut down. Thank you. 
uh, it will set it down itself. So I'm working for the version two as well. So in which more feature will be impl implemented. Like if I ask my robot to like uh, grab a glass of water from me, for me from the kitchen, then it will go there and grab a glass of water for me. So I'm working on that particular project. Uh, these this particular project is developed in Python programming. That is the advanced level of uh, robotics programming through uh, and the Raspberry Pi system we're using. Yeah. Abhishek Saturday said ROS operating system. Yeah, robotics operating system is essential. But uh, if you do have the basic of basic knowledge in robotics, then you can go for the ROS or something like that. Those certification will further help you get a good job in future. Will you kindly discuss in class about it? Yes. Robotic operating system, we will discuss in our next class. We will discuss the software aspect and everything related to robotics we will go through one of the basic projects and also we will see many implementation of other softwares as, as well like freezing and all to develop the circuitries and to perform the simulation we do have sims lab so we will also get back to that yes anyone else do have any doubts or question then please help me with your question sir suppose we want socket said 89 csc first year Suppose we want to make a robot leg or its arm. How can we proceed? Okay. So I already built one of the bionic arm completely from the scratch. I'm not taking any example from YouTube and other places because you will find many flaws in the online platform. So try to build from scratch. It will take time, but it will be done with perfection. So if you start to make, uh, you want to make a robot's leg or its arm, then it start uh, proceeding, proceed with the basic uh, things like, what thing will be required to produce the motion? Suppose if you take the motor, then motor will be responsible to only rotate in single uh, two of the direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise. You cannot able to control the speed of motor using the normal or conventional thing. You have to implement other thing as well. But uh, also motor, apart from the normal motor, the geared motor can be used to produce the torque, required torque to perform the task. So suppose if we want to build robotics leg or arm, best possible thing you should choose is the servo motors. So in servo motors, we can able to control the direction as well as angle of rotation. Direction and angle of rotation in servo motor with the command. So servo motor also produces a great torque. So try to idealize, uh, come up with the idea how to integrate different things like the servo motor, get the dimension and start designing the part. First do the rough sketch in your copy, then come up with the 3D design in Tinkercad, other platform. If you do have knowledge in uh, designing softwares like SolidWorks and Annex or so many other things are there, then it will be perfect for you to have the same. Or otherwise, if you anyone any senior in there do have the knowledge, take the help from them and complete the process. Integrate everything. Choose the microcontroller. Suppose if you are operating two of the robotics leg and two of the arms, then one Arduino I know Nano will be enough, or one Arduino you know will be enough. Otherwise, if you are thinking of more functionality like to grab and hold and lift and drop, then uh, you need to have um, advanced microcontroller for that. That is the Arduino Mega or something like that, in which more IO pins are present. Means input and output pins are present. So any other question? I believe, Saket, your question is answered, right? In case if still you do have any doubts, then ping me up. So hello, sir. Uh, that is uh, Sangeeta Gosal uh, from CV CSBS. First year, how can we use robots in industry? Robots are everywhere in, in industry, from the textile industry, from automotive sector, medical industry, everywhere robotics and automation. The automation itself is a robotics product. Okay, so in industry, robotics is being used and currently people are working to uh, build several smart robots in, in, for industry to let us have a great control over production, efficient production. All I can say, efficient production. We can able to build a car using simple engine or something like that. But the, the efficiency will decide how much it will get popular and how many people are going to buy them. So efficient process is mostly required in every industry. From textile to food industry everywhere, even though the food processing industry does uses the combination of robots and automation. In there, we do not call it as robots, we call it as automation. 
So not the humanoid kind of looking robot is implement implemented in the industry itself. But yes, the automation part is everywhere in every industry. Yeah. Thank you. I hope your question is answered, Sangeeta. And anyone else do have any question related to the same? And also you can connect uh, with me as well. I'm always available for my uh, juniors and the um, in, in engineering college students. If they want to want to develop any of the project, you can come back to me and ping me over anytime you want to. There is no limitation on that. That is why we do have the alumni association over there and the robotics club itself. The team members like Azizul and other people will help you a lot in this endeavor. You don't have to worry about anything. So I'm handing over this session mm -hmm. to Azizul, back to you and Sumantha sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm thankful for each and every team member and every students out there who like continuously integrated with this online classroom platform to further um, involve in the robotics journey. And I'll, I will love to see you all guys in person in the robotics club. So thank you. Thank you, Saurabh. Thank, yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. I personally appreciated your approach for this uh, today's content. Uh, your depth or understanding of this total uh, robotics and automation as well as artificial intelligence and any more more things that will become the most memorable morning in our uh, robotics uh, club for yes, the first sir. years also they personally you, much more interested to add this group so yes, sir, definitely we, as well we as, as a senior sir, uh, like you as a faculty member we as a senior like the alumni of engineering college we want them to learn the exact core thing rather than being dependent of other stuff and wasting their time right so that will be great and in future session also we will try our best to cover each and every aspect from basic to programming level uh, developments the subject interests me very much and i want i want, I want to plan me more more like that of the subjects as well as learn more. Yes. Sir. So thank you all the first year yes. students who joined in this beautiful session or learn something from our notable alumni, Saurabh Kumar of the Mechanical Engineering Department. Thank you the Robotics Club coordinators, Ajijul and Pandey for their initiative for making this event successful. The day mm -hmm. of uh, Saturday will be not in uh, of state. As well as I want to thank uh, Another faculty coordinator, Dr. Sujan Pal, also might be. Uh, he is having some personal work. That's why he couldn't be present for this session. And never now again. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. I thank do. you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so yeah. much. I hope it was a, it was a great opportunity to learn about robotics and automation and all those things. And Sourav sir already gave us the necessary knowledge in the field of robotics and I'm very much thankful to Sourav sir and the, all the faculty coordinators for giving us the permission to take this initiative and i thankful to all the participants for participating this event and I will tell you that uh, tomorrow we have also another uh, another uh, classes on this field uh, from 11 p.m. Uh, thank you all of you we can leave. Yeah thank you thank everyone you. Thank and you. Thank, thank you as well for the contribution to so bring much. each and every member in this platform. Have a great day. Thank, thank you everyone. You, Thank you. Sure.